the other part of the build we were waiting on. Uh, these were on back order at Chief Aircraft for a little while, then got stuck in the mail. Um, Titanium Pro Links 440, Hangar 9. Uh, these are three inch and they're gonna replace these that came with the kit. I'm sure the ones that came with the kit are sufficient, but I wanted a little bit larger um, ball link. So we're gonna go with these Hangar 9 Pro Links and we're gonna get the elevator one made up here pretty quick and then um, see how it goes, if it goes well. And I don't need to revisit um, components to buy or anything. We're gonna make up the push rods for the wings and uh, that'll get us going. Okay, so looking around in some old hardware that I've collected, um, looking for some ball joints to uh, to use on this this laser. So I've got these, I've got, I've got a few of them and I think they match basically the color scheme perfectly. I have no idea what brand they are. Good. So <clears throat> I measured the diameter of uh, this, this Pro Link is about 2.75 millimeters at the threads. And then I measured the interior, the inner diameter here of, uh, of this push rod and it's about 2.5 millimeters. So that's only leaving me a quarter millimeter of uh, interference on the threads, which to me sounded like, I guess not very much um, so what I did is I made this link up here and you can see how much thread engagement I've got as small as it'll go so um, just to do a pull test I took two of my uh, scorpion drivers here and basically did a pull test uh, held each one like this and pulled um, pretty hard, probably, I wouldn't say as hard as I can, but, um, hard enough that I hurt my hands. Anyway, I think, uh, I think they're going to work out great as far as strength. And, um, maybe somebody can tell me how much thread engagement you like to see and, you know, for, uh, links and stuff. I'm, I'm sure that these are metric. And okay, say, mocking up the elevator push rod here. Um, I did have to do a little bit of uh, modification. So on this phenolic horn here, um, as it comes from the factory, and you can see down here, it comes with these really tiny uh, bolts. And the diameter of the horn is actually just shy of two millimeters, about 1.8. 1.9 um, millimeters. You can see this one is much larger. Um, let's see if I can get a measurement for you here real quick. So I've opened it up almost a millimeter. We're at 2.6, 2.7. Let's see what this says. 2.8. 2.8, 2.7 millimeters on the diameter. Obviously that is gonna weaken the um, control horn here at the most narrow spots. So um, I got a little worried. I thought I might've made a mistake, but I have these um, extreme flight control horns here for another project that's coming up and Basically, I measured the distance between the edge of the ball, uh, the bolt hole here, and the narrowest part on the extreme flight control horns. And I compared it with the uh, same measurement on this control horn here. I also took the thickness into account and um, they're, they're measuring right around the same. Uh, this is a larger control horn for a larger model. It's for like a 100cc airplane. These are smaller for this 30cc airplane. 
So the measurements were basically the same. Uh, just something to think about if you guys are gonna change the hardware that comes in the kit. Uh, obviously you wouldn't wanna go, uh, the larger you go, the greater the stress is on these two points here, especially if you're doing some hard 3D and things like that. Um, so what I did to open the hole up is I just put a Harbor Freight um, round file in my drill here and just chucked it up very lightly and then very very carefully i um, basically reamed out this hole and then i finished it off with a little bit of medium ca just to see if it'd wick in there okay guys got the uh, elevator mocked up here um, 440 pro link three inches uh, two of the uh, ball links that i had that are red and um, the ball has actually been anodized. Um, this is just a test fit here. So I'm gonna lose this red bolt because it's not quite long enough. And uh, even though the arms are threaded and I'm probably gonna use Loctite, I like to use a lock nut on the back side. Uh, it's also important to mention here that um, even though that these are three inches in length on the pro links, they are threaded all the way in. So I cannot get this any shorter than it is now, which is gonna be okay in my opinion for this instance, because um, we're at neutral here. And uh, on my one and a quarter inch SWB arm, we're almost perfectly vertical on the case. Um, you can see here that I've got a washer. Uh, let's just start from the bottom side. I've got a bolt running through the ball link and then we have our phenolic horn here, um, a small washer and then a lock nut. So it looks like it's gonna be okay and there's no slop that I can find. So I think this is what we're gonna run with. We're gonna do the same thing on the ailerons. And then all of our surfaces will be um, ready for us to program the servos. We're gonna reprogram the centers, I think, and the endpoints, and try to get the best mechanical setup we can that is possible. Also, don't forget, we're gonna come back later and we're gonna seal these hinges. Uh, the elevator was the first hinge that I glued in and um, it operates pretty smoothly, but you can tell here I've got like a two and a half millimeter gap at the uh, hinge line. So I don't want any air getting through there and causing flutter. So that's coming up. So uh, let's keep moving along. Let's try to get this thing knocked out. All right, guys, got the left wing here all mocked up. Uh, had to make a slight modification um, to the turnbuckles here. So um, I ordered three inch titanium turnbuckles and I was about four millimeters too long with the servo configuration that you see here with the output spline towards the aileron. Um, there were two ways to correct this. Uh, the fastest way is I took, um, I took one of the pro links into um, my shop and hit it with the bench grinder and took two millimeters off each end uh, so I could keep going. But um, if you didn't wanna do that, um, I've already done the math. If you order the, well, I could have ordered the three and a half inch with these ball joints that I'm using here and the math would have worked out just fine if I turned the servo around. But I chose to go ahead and use the bench grinder. So um, that was a suggestion from a couple of my friends who uh, I was talking to earlier today. But um it looks pretty good here. We've got a um, three mil bolt coming in the bottom through the ball joint, uh, through the servo arm, and we've got a lock nut on the back 
rifle. So I'm not gonna use any uh, Loctite there. And we've got the same setup here that we had on the elevator with the bolt going through the ball joint, through the phenolic horn and a washer and then a lock nut. So I'm gonna knock out the, um, the other wing and then uh, we'll come back and we'll tighten up this uh, bolt here for the servo arm after we make sure all our throws and everything uh, are exactly like we want them. So uh, we're still making progress and um, maybe we'll be done with this thing uh, shortly. All right, guys, got the other wing done up just like the first one. So it's all on to the fuselage now until we want to program our servos. Okay guys, had the uh, three, three inch offset arm. Yeah, three inch offset arm uh, come in the mail after being stuck for 30 days. Um, got the three and a half inch arm. We're gonna trade, trade it out. So we're gonna trade this um, three and a half inch arm out for this three inch arm so that we can get a little bit more throw on the servo. All right guys, took the three and a half inch out. Got the three inch offset arm in. Gotta find some bolts for it, but I've got way more throw than I had before. We'll tighten up these lines and We'll be good on the rudder. All right, guys. Uh, it's been a few days here. Um, getting back on the laser again. Uh, just want to take a quick assessment uh, where we are and then what we're about to do. So, um, got the new shorter rudder horn in. Of course, we did the linkage in the back. All good there. Um, everything that goes in the plane is pretty much in the plane. We've got all our servo ends coming out here. Um, gonna use this smart fly receiver stand. Probably mount our receiver like this. So everything reaches, got the fuel tank in there, the ignition's under the fuel tank, fuel dot. We have the um, Tech Aero Ignition BEC. Still need a switch, it's over there, gotta do some soldering on it. And we have to make sure we make room for a battery. So I've got the um, motor back on the front of this thing. And uh, what we don't have is the throttle servo um, you can see I've got this box here that came with the plane I'm thinking about using but I thought it would be a great idea if uh, we clean up the table cut the cow get it mounted throw the prop and the spinner on put the wings on since they're done and uh, see if we can take a CG measurement of this airplane because what I don't want to do is have to add a bunch of tail weight so what I'm thinking is we'll take the CG if it needs to be moved back, I will eliminate the pull-pull setup. We'll put direct uh, push rod on the tail. We'll move the rudder servo back if we have to. And then um, we will put the throttle servo where the rudder servo goes. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're gonna mount the servo on the left side of the tank up there. And I got rid of my hard link throttle arm. It just wasn't working uh, real well. And we're gonna go with some golden rods. So let's get this cow cut and then um, we'll get started. All right, so uh, going with a pretty common method of cutting the cow, most people are used to. Uh, I like to use some card stock, but I don't have any. So I've got a piece of uh, notebook paper here tape down uh, to the fuselage and uh, it's far enough back I can get the cowl on 
I have the engine as it's going to be uh, installed in the plane because it is and all I've done is draped this piece of uh, paper over and taken this sharpie and kind of gave myself a rough estimate and then I got a little more accurate with it and um, this is the spark plug spark plug tip here uh, that's going to get you pretty close um, you can see maybe you can see where I tried to use the sharpie on the um, spark plug and the tubes for the muffler and I tried to put the cowl on to circumvent the paper process but the paper process works so that's what I did so we're going to take the engine off next we'll put the cowl on we're going to transfer these uh, drawings to the cowl and then um, I kind of like to get this starting point and then just kind of go for it a lot of putting the engine on putting the cowl on taking the cowl off and the engine off cutting it some more putting it back on and fitting it a bunch so um, personally I'm planning to do some slots for the muffler but um, you know we'll see and uh, most likely the ignition cap will have to be cut something like that but a lot of trial and error a lot of fitting and cutting um, so it's, it's going to take just a minute, but, uh, yeah, let's get to cutting. All right, guys, uh, <clears throat> about six or eight test fits working with the Dremel. Um, something to note, I forgot about this hump in the cow, so, uh, kind of offset everything back just a little bit, which I was okay with, so I went with it. Still need to do some work for the um, spark plug and the boot that's gonna have to come through here, but um, I think it looks pretty good. It, the holes are not necessarily symmetrical, and that's what I'm gonna try to work on now. So I'm just gonna bring you over here so you can see it. So looking from the top down, you can see that this one's kind of going off and this way a little bit. And this one's mostly straight, but it's a little wide in the center. So I'm about to uh, take uh, some painter's tape here. I'm gonna tape off basically a work area. And then um, I'm gonna see if I can make these slots a little more symmetrical. All right, guys, you can see uh, I've kind of got this grid here I made out of painter's tape. Um, I measured the width, the length at the front and back. I measured everything and they're pretty symmetrical as far as squares go. So my plan now is to take my Dremel tool and Dremel away everything that you see that's red. Um, but I'm gonna try to keep the corners rounded so we get a nice long slot with um, rounded corners. I think it'll look uh, it'll look pretty good. It'll look better than what we've got here. It'll look more symmetrical. And then we'll come back and visit the uh, spark plug and the spark plug boot. All right, here we are after the fact. You can see. Um, a little more symmetrical you can see um, this exhaust stack is a little further set back I, th I think maybe either the exhaust might be a bent a little bit or it was just made that way based on how it's bolted up but looks really good looks really symmetrical um, we're going to take the uh, tape off and then start working on the spark plug. I think that'll do just fine. All right, got the cowl mounted up. Drilled these out with a 16th inch drill bit and then used a 
hand file to get them just big enough for those, um, I think they're M3 bolts to go through. Um, exhaust stack's coming out. We'll clean those up later. Boot for the spark plug looks pretty good. Cow's nice and secure. Shouldn't go anywhere. And um, got a good spinner gap there. Still need to cut an air hole to get some ventilation directly on the front of the engine. I went ahead and cut that square out of the cow. Probably gonna have to open it up. It's looking real good.